Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave and welcome to this next entry within the Trading Psychology series. Today we will be focusing on why you always do the wrong thing at the wrong time. Now this is going to be a more emotional psychological entry so we won't be going too much into the charts. However, when talking about these sorts of things we need to really do a deep dive into human psychology and why is it that we seem to do the wrong thing at the wrong time? Well, Typically, most, most of the time, these things are derived from fear. You might have your trading plan all set out in front of you. You know exactly what you're going to do. You've seen that you have support here, so you're definitely going to buy here. But in the moment, you have a change of heart. Something takes over. You don't take the buy. The position gets filled or would have gotten filled in retrospect and goes in your direction and now you're left in the dust and you're wondering why did i not take that even though i'd set out to do exactly that and vice versa for a sell of course you know it, it, it works both ways now when it comes down to it and when you're thinking of these sorts of more emotional states we have to understand that the reason why there was a change of pace why there was a change of heart has to do not because your plan was faulty. It has to do likely because your emotional state had become changed, so you made an emotional decision. When you're first creating your plans, you're likely in a logical state. You're in an analytical mind. You are thinking with you 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 are thinking with a goal in mind. You are thinking based off of likely some form of technical analysis or whatever it might be. You have very strict and likely rigid rules with regards to that. So of course, I'm going to use the example of technical analysis. And let's just say I suppose we can go to live scene here. And let's just say naked chart. I'm gonna be a seller at. Uh, uh, I'm gonna be seller at this area right here. We had just put in this high, and then it pops back in um, early January, right back to that same area. And you say, you know what? I got a nice resistance right there, and I'd like to be a seller because I I feel like well, we're still in a bear market, and time to uh, I'd, I'd rather take advantage of that as I'm more more than happy to be a seller on resistance um, anytime you're in an overall downtrend. Fair point. I would say the same thing. Now, what a lot of people did during this time was they had planned this out after putting in this first high, you know, price action spends about a couple weeks coming down, filling out this area, which is probably when you're in that more logical state, looking at it from afar, planning this sort of thing out, you can very, very, very clearly see that there's some sell pressure around this area. And when price action actually does boost back up into this area, albeit very very rapidly, actually, um, very low volume on it, but actually pretty damn rapidly as far as the uh, as far as the timing of when this move was put in. And then you have a change of heart right on that move. You say, wait a second, I, I don't want to sell this anymore. I, I, I think I want to maybe even buy. And that's really when the really when the problem confounds. But let's just go with the more base assumption first that you don't stick to your original plan of being a seller right there. Why do you do that? Why did you do that? Well, you've gone into an emotional state and now you have a fear. You have a fear likely of loss in this scenario. You don't want to lose. You don't like taking a losing trade, which no one does. But of course, in a good trading plan and something that I want to really purport and really get across, especially in a series like this, losses are inevitable. So that should be a soothing fact rather than something that causes anxiety. Because when you're feeling anxiety, when you get into that fear provoked state, you will no longer be thinking logically. You cannot think logically. In fact, it is, a, it is a biological, physiological fact that when you get into more emotional, fear-based states, your, your autonomous, logical side of the brain does turn off. And you're no longer thinking like that. You quite literally can't think logically. So even though you did all the planning over here, you had it all set out, you felt like you knew what was going on, and in rich, and you know, obviously, in 2020 hindsight, you had you had a great trade if if, if you were going to take it. Once price action gets there and you start feeling that fear, it's like that never happened, because remember, you are now blocked off from thinking in that logical state. You are now in essentially what what is a flight or flight uh, mode. If you're if you're familiar with those sorts of uh, modes of thinking, your your parath your parasympathetic system and your sympathetic thinking system. So or sorry, emotional system. So emotionally and cognitively speaking, we want to always avoid getting into these more fear-based states because it, it's a, it is a fact, it is a biological fact that you will not make the right logical decision when you are in an emotional state of fear. 
you just want to you just want to get out of the way you just want to essentially avoid it's typically what happens especially in you know especially in uh trading it's you don't really have anything to fight I mean, some people try to fight the market i suppose um in maybe a clever turn of phrase but really what te- what people try to do is they try to avoid which is more of a flight type response now isn't it so in order to avoid this what can you do what should you do well there's no right or wrong answer for this the right or wrong answer is reliant upon you. For myself, what I've found the best the the best way to avoid any sort of fear based state or to keep me in a more um, autonomous and logic based state with putting reality first rather than putting my emotional state, my emotional conditioning, my emotional filter on on life first is to make sure that I take care of myself. So that for me includes eating, you know, eating healthily, eating well, essentially eating clean. For myself, I, I typically go towards low carb based diets. Again, this is not, you know, a, a uh, health channel or anything like that. But I found that when I don't eat carbs, I typically have a, a much more steady state of, um, of, of thinking. I'm not really like going up and down here and there. I'm not really having those blood sugar spikes. I also like to go to uh, and have some physical exertion. So I like lifting weights. That could also be, you know, going for a jog, going for a run, you know, doing whatever it is to physically stress yourself because we, again, and we're going to go a little bit deeper here now, we as humans are not to i mean we are animals we are animals in the most basic sense of it and we evolved throughout millennia of millennia with being pretty damn active so we had built up systems within ourselves that reward us for essentially exerting ourselves because exerting ourselves not only implies that we're probably getting closer to where we want to go but it also implies that we're going to be overall healthier as far as a more physiological sense which has carryover into your psychological sense. So you'll notice this a lot in like memes of, you know, some, I'm trying to think of one right now, uh, of some like, of some just couch potato also ran who just, he sits on the, he sits on the couch and he watches a sports game and he gets mad. He gets emotionally charged up in this because he doesn't have any other, real real you know exertions in his life he doesn't have anything that is significant in that sense that would take away that base layer of needing to rev the engines and instead he gets it in in, essentially you know in um what's it called vicariously from watching you know people on tv which is not which is obviously not the same as you know going out and doing it yourself you know, watching people play like, a, you know, football or whatever it might be, whether you're watching American or European football, you're not getting the same. Someone watching the sport is not getting the same sort of experience as someone actually playing the sport. However, emotionally, he is getting worked up very easily because he's not exerted himself in the same sense. Perhaps a little bit of a uh, little bit of a doctored example. But my point is, is that when are you at your most relaxed? Well, for myself, I know that I'm at my most relaxed and a lot of people that I know, and you probably notice this yourself as well, after physically exerting yourself pretty damn hard. It's hard in the moment, you're feeling taxed in the moment, but afterwards, it's like, it's like you have like a, just a flush of, of, of relaxation come across you. And that's the mode you want to be coming from, relaxation. Relaxation is the cure to this sort of emotionally driven problem of feeling like you're, you know, you're going to miss out or, or having a fear of it's the wrong position now or a fear of loss or whatever it might be. It's the relaxation knowing that, well, you made your logical, you made your logical plan beforehand as long as you can stick to that. You will be fine. Assume, and this is obviously making the assumption that you have sound technical analysis, that you have sound uh, risk reward management, sound position management, all those sorts of things. But this is obviously psychologically focused, not trading focused. Which, again, you know, once you have all the right trading know how, I think it's really just conditioning your emotions to get in the right position, which is the only thing that's going to separate from you and prolonged success over time. But remember, logically speaking, we know that with good risk management, with good technical analysis, over the long period of time, over many diff- over many um, samples, you will likely be successful, assuming that all those things are in place. 
your edge should, should produce that with more and more repeated repetitions. It's just another redundant, redundant term from my, from my apologies about that. My point is, is that understanding and accepting that fact will help take you away from that, from those emotions. And then whatever is needed on top of that to get you into that base state of relaxation will just, will just propel you further and further towards playing out your plan and making it easier. So that is just second nature with this sort of a thing with this sort of a thing it is really a journey about getting to understand yourself so a lot of people have vices like you know like i said so i'm just sharing mine my vices essentially you know physical exertion eating well uh, meditating really really strong one going for walks reading books listening to lectures um and all those sorts of things help calm are, are calming to me i feel like i am I feel like I am doing what I need to do in order to take care of my more monkey side, monkey sided conditioning. Because remember, when we're talking about these sorts of con emotional conditions, we are relating ourselves back into primordial states of, of, of human beings, which just cannot be avoided. We are conditioned with this to the core, even probably before we became humans, you know, going further, further back down the line. Now I'm no biologist myself. Um, I just read a ton of this, uh, a ton of this sort of literature. Um, so take this, you know, I'm probably getting a few things, uh, here, uh, here and there wrong. My point is though, is that in order to get rid of those primordial emotional conditionings, which we typically have in today's world, you know, still in today's world, even though we don't still have the same sort of stressors that 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 early prototypical humans had, we still have the same emotional responses. So what does that mean? I mean, in practice, that's basically saying, you know, when humans first came around, they had a lot of things to worry about. I mean, people didn't last all that long. I would imagine people, you know, you were running. I mean, tigers were a big problem. Tig lions and tigers were killing people left and fucking right. Snakes were killing people left and right. You know, that's why we typically have an innate fear of snakes. Actually, it's it goes that deep. They're jacking people up. My point is, is that it was a, it was an evolutionary um, advantage back in those back in those times to be, to get into that flight or fight responsive state relatively fast it was an advantage to be super relaxed at the same point in time <laughs> but that's why you kind of like relax after exerting yourself because then you, you know it's like it's like you're telling your biological system that you're getting away or you're in good fitness to get away from a legitimate uh legitimate uh, what's it called um uh threat threat to your overall being which causes those emotional states so in today's world, when we don't, we really, we really don't have those those physical threats anymore. I mean, people aren't really getting killed by like lions and tigers and snakes and and, and that kind of shit all the time. Uh, it's pretty rare. I mean, people typically die of of old age or like stress related diseases. But remember, these like they're not really dying of running away from predators or anything like that. So we still have these systems set up to help propel us in that direction of. Of, of not having to, of, or sorry, uh, to propel us in the direction of rewarding us for getting away from those more physical, uh, those more physical dangers. But we don't have those physical dangers anymore. So how does it go now? Well, we get worked up over nothing. So going back to that example of that couch potato getting worked up over a football game, well, he's getting worked up because he doesn't have any other legitimate stressors in, a li in his life. So he's ready to go at any given moment. So if you haven't taken care of yourself perhaps i mean perhaps you know it might be different i can't speak for everyone i can just speak from my own experience but when i don't take care of myself when i don't go to the gym or or or, or do what i need to do or or go to sauna which really helps as well i notice that i get into that emotional state faster which leads to making a bad trading decision easily or if that's a word, <laughs> easier. Um, so again, it is so damn important to take care of that and to take care of your mind and your body as those evolutionary, what were evolutionary advantages to have, to have responses like that, stress responses like that are not going to be an advantage in this game. We want to be as calm, as relaxed as possible. Now I know during my live streams, I get pretty worked up. You know, I ha I'm having fun. That's pretty that's a caricature of how I really am when I'm trading by myself. I'm pretty, you know, speaking more like this, a little bit on a slower tone, a little bit more relaxed or significantly more relaxed. And I know that if I can just play out my strategy over time, well, that's, that's what's going to make gains, not 
not, you know, getting in an emotional state and doing the wrong thing essentially. So again, I hope that this one finds you well. Understand the relation between your emotional cogni cognitive systems and understand what it takes for you to take care of that and put you in a more relaxed state so that you will not get caught up in these emotional states, which block you quite literally from thinking in the right way and feeling the right emotions when a trade is coming up, whether it goes for or against you. That's going to do it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.